let's talk about the chess boxing event, boys. Now, of course, the chess boxing event happened Sunday. It was fucking crazy. We had 317,000 peak viewers. The VOD of the stream has 3.5 million viewers. The event itself costs $1.6 million. So by every single metric I think that we could find, it was the biggest event I've ever done. Was there any profit for the event? No, it lost a bit of money. I think it lost like 200K, maybe 150K, which isn't that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Copium, copium, copium. It isn't that bad. It isn't that bad. You know why? Because I can make, I can make up, I can make up a good chunk of that. If I, hey, <laughs> woo! Welcome to the button. Has had Botox. Ooh, exciting. So, you know, that's, that's how we get our money back, baby. Yes, sir. So the event was slated to happen on Saturday. Or excuse me, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, and so Saturday was like our weigh-in stream. Uh, and I don't know how many of you guys tuned into the weigh-in stream. Uh, things went decently well in the weigh-in stream. It, it was a bit awkward. Weigh-in streams are always a little bit weird, I think. Uh, we, we went through all the fighters uh, and, and, and basically tried to see if everybody was comfortable, ready, and excited for their matchups. Uh, and, and everything seemed to be going well. So the day of the event, this is the goals going in. I would consider the event a success straight up if everyone who fought in the event had a good time and did not get injured. And then outside of that, what I wanted, like my personal goals, were for the event to get the most live viewers I've ever had in a stream. And then also have a full arena. Make sure the people who are watching in person had a good time. And then finally, the people who watch online had a good time. And so uh, when I was at the event, I checked in with all the fighters. You know, I talked to them day, the day before. We went over all the rules, and I felt really good. I, I talked to most of the fighters before the event started because they all had their own private suite that they were hanging out at. But then, the third thing that I was concerned about, the people in the event, I noticed a few issues. I noticed that the people who showed up might not be there. Let me explain. The event was slated to start at 4 o'clock. But the stream would begin at 3.30 with a 30-minute countdown. And I look out into the crowd from the suites. And I'm starting to notice that it's about like 3.15. And not a lot of people are in the crowd yet. And I'm like, huh, that's weird. I don't think too much of it. I ask Nick Allen, who's helping run the event. I'm like, hey, where's everybody at? And he's like, oh, they'll be showing up soon. So I was like, all right, great, whatever. At about 3.17, again, remember. The stream's supposed to start at 3.30. I go to take a shit. Now, this was kind of embarrassing because I went to take a shit in the bathroom in the suite section and there was only one toilet and they did not have a swipe bidet. Unbeknownst to me, this was a swipe bidet-less area. And I don't want to get too graphic here, but it, I got a, a bit of a nervous shit that popped out of me. All right, it wasn't, it wasn't a one-wipe dream. I was sitting there, and every time I'd wipe, and you have to check to make sure you, it's clean because there's nothing on the toilet paper, there would always be a little bit of shit. And I just, I was there for like literally 10 minutes. So long so that the stream was literally two, three minutes away from starting. Finally, I get it done. Like 50 wipes later. It was literally a quadruple flush. Quadruple flush. I shit you not. Well, I did shit you, but I'm not kidding. Finally, I'm done. I'm like sweating off my brow. I get up, I open the door, and across the bathroom, leaned up on the side like this, is Gotham Chess, aka Levy. And I'm and I'm like taken aback. I'm like, I, I didn't know somebody else was in the room still. I thought I was safe. And I was like, oh, what's up? And he's like, oh, thought I recognized those shoes anywhere. And the mother knew it was me. Because I had Crocs on that Afghans gave me as a gift that said Lud Afghan and a, the yard uh, uh, giblet on it. And I'm like, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Anyway, I wash my hands. It's now 329. And, and one of the main people who made this event as special and as amazing as it was, the main head of production was named Jacob. And I run into Jacob uh, at, at 329. Again, remember, 330, the stream is supposed to start. And we're standing at a suite. It's just me and him. And I'm looking out at the arena. And I swear to God, barring the basketball floor, it looked exactly like this. Like it was more dimly lit. There was no basketball floor. But there were, the seats were fucking empty. And I was like, dude, this is kind of embarrassing. You know, because I, I was already a bit late because of the shit. But this also made me nervous. He's like, yeah. I'm like, where is everybody? He's like, 
I don't really know. I think they might be buying merch. And I'm like, this is a problem. We can't start the event to absolute dead silence. Nobody in the arena. That would be a little bit weird. And so in that moment, I'm sitting there. I'm like, let's delay the stream 15 minutes. He's like, what? This is a $1.6 million broadcast that I am delaying for two reasons. One, because I took a stinky shit. And two, because I did not see enough people out there. I'm like, yeah, let's just delay it 15 minutes. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, is it going to fuck with production? He's like, probably not. And so I go for the most ballsy late wig of all time. A 15-minute delay where there were already about 40,000 people waiting in pre-chat to watch the stream. The smartest fucking thing I did the entire night. It was a genius. Because what ended up happening is not only did the 15-minute delay almost double the amount of people in the waiting room ready to watch the actual event, but it also filled up the arena. Because it turns out that, yes, a lot of people were getting merch. And so we sent out Jerma by himself at 3.30. And this was offline. And he was just a fucking rock star. He was in the ring by himself. And he was like, how's it going, everybody? This event's about to start in a little bit here. Are we having a good night tonight? And, uh, and as the, uh, the event starts, it was very full. And I think we can even see that here. It's none other than Ludwig! And this was fucking crazy. To walk out to that many people, it was, it was insane. There was a shit ton of people in the arena. I mean, thousands of people is, is an overwhelming thing to be the center of attention of. Oh, hello, everybody. How's it going? Holy shit. And then we went on. We introduced the event. We brought out the sky table, which... Again, in person, we don't have all the music, gizmos, and gadgets that the uh, the stream does. So I didn't realize how epic the sky table was. This table will be where the magic happens, not just for Super Smash Bros. Look at this. But for every single chess game today. Anyway, this idea was conceived because I thought it'd be tight if we would have the chess ring come from the floor. And... Uh, and uh, you know, rise up like a monolith for the people to play on. And it turns out that's a huge, huge issue with safety because the floor would have to move and then maybe it gives in or whatever. And so what what Jacob recommended was for it to come from the ceiling, which honestly I think was even more badass in a way. I think it descending from the ceiling was pretty fucking badass. You can get punch in the face. So the event begins in our first match, which was the ones I was most nervous about was Smash Boxing. Are you guys ready to, for, for the first card? Now, every single match had this video that we prepared the uh, the day before. <laughs> These videos were shot in a hotel room that was, it was it was like a hotel room for ants. My name is we had these tiny ass hotel rooms and we we lit them up. This was like the entry for the, for the, the hallway for the room. This is the bathroom that we had a light through. And we had like six dudes in there. I think at one point, BoxBox Box went on stream and said it, he thought he was walking into a porn set because of how small it was and how many cameras there were and how much the bed took up the space. Uh, but but insane spot to have shot from. Uh, but also, I think we got really cool products that came from them. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the the tweet that Nick posted. This is this is where we did the recording, and this is what the final product looked like. Which is pretty sick that you can use a room like this to get a product like this. But they ended up working out pretty well. Now, the first card of the night I was the most nervous for. Because not only was it the Smash Boxing, it was also the two people who I was the most nervous about in terms of fighting. I had the least information about. This was one of the, uh, the last second cards that were added. Originally, it was supposed to be Josh Man against Hungrybox. For weeks and weeks and weeks, Hungrybox was saying that he was interested in doing this event, he wanted to do this event, that we would do this event, and I kept asking him. I even set up uh, boxing training uh, appointments for him, uh, and then finally, I just get like a like a hard no, like I think sometime in like September, about two months before the event, that Juan won't do it, and I'm like fuck, because I already paid Josh Man to do it. I paid every single fighter a flat amount uh, of money up front to pay for the, the boxing and the food and and so that they wouldn't have to like work if they had a job for that period. 
And so Josh Man didn't have an opponent. So he hits up his friend Spud, this New Zealand melee player, and they're good buddies, and they were meant to fight each other. And I use the word meant to fight each other because what ended up happening is that Josh Man broke his arm in an arm wrestling match six weeks before the event. So what was supposed to be Josh Man versus Hungry Box ended up being Josh Man versus Spud, a fill for the event, and then ended up, I had to get a fill for Josh Man, so it ended up being Spud versus Two Saint. So none of the people in the final fight were even meant to be in the fight in the first place. And so it made a bit of a weird card. And the fight, I was a little bit nervous about. And I think rightfully so. Because <laughs> this is too sane. God. Good Lord. Woo! Who is an absolute beast. And then this was Spud. <laughs> we have Spud! Who's a little bit shorter, who's a lot a bit lighter, almost nine pounds lighter, and who has five inches less in reach. He can't look, the all smoke right, came out. Right. Not as height. And yeah, for sure did not seem like it would be a very balanced fight. But Spud had more experience, or so I thought. You see, Spud had about two to three months of training. Toussaint had half of that. But what I didn't know until after the event is that Spud did almost zero boxing training. Every player was supposed to do boxing training. I would message them and keep up and ask them if they were doing it. And they'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. But Spud, unbeknownst to me this entire time, took the 20,000, wanted to play a bunch of Super Smash Bros, wanted to live in the States without having to work at all, but didn't want to do the boxing training. So he basically scammed me out of 20,000 because he was down to get punched in the face. <laughs> Which, you know what? Scammers are going to scam. But it showed a lot in the actual ring. Now, the way it was supposed to work is the first game in every odd number round after that was the smash round. And Spud did win the smash round. And then all the even number rounds would be boxing. So there'd be three total boxing rounds. So Spud started out hot with a win in, in, in smash. Yes, wow. But then he had to do the thing where he punched and got punched in the face, which didn't go super well. I'll just let the round play out. It's not that long. <laughs> we got two. Bell's live. We're in. We're in. Oh, live. All right. Oh, all right. Oh, 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 into like a straight, oh, everything's right, connecting. Right, oh, 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 Literally oh, impossible to miss, it looks like. Hit some body shots. And the ref instantly does a standing count. So he starts the count, he counts to eight, and then if you don't put your gloves up and say I'm ready to fight within eight seconds, or if the ref sees your eyes glaze and whatever, he will call it. So immediate, immediate out the oh, gate. All right, oh, move his head. With a lot of heart. <laughs> this is bullying. Toussaint walks over. He even shakes his head because of, I think, how easy it is. With a lot of heart. Talk uh, about Toussaint. What's his strategy? That, that, he that. looks at the ref because it, it, it's not even a fight here. It looks more like an initiation into a frat in America than it does a boxing match. 20 seconds of the oh, clock. Oh, Budge is fast to drive. Back to make the top. 18, 17. Standing count. That, yeah, that that's correct. So, so are we at, we're at two. Are we at two right now? And then... I don't know if Spud knew or didn't know, but he just counts to 10 and Spud never puts his gloves up. So it was kind of a joke of a fight. Honestly, I didn't even realize how bad it was in the moment as a commentator because it went by so fast and I wasn't able to see the perspective that the people online were, but it was a bit of a shit show. Is this it it kind of ends in a whimper. The crowd's a bit silent. Spud got his shit knocked around for a bit, but he got 20K in the pocket. So, you know, he's waving off. And that's it. It's a first round. That's it. It was a. It was the round one boxing TKO. There it is. And I think it made everybody in the crowd a bit uneasy about what was meant to happen for the rest of the event. Now I wasn't that nervous, at least not at this point. Although that was a bit of a shit show. Although that's obviously not how I wanted things to go, and I wanted everyone to make sure they're training and, and fighting well. And I checked in, and I, you know, I just he wasn't being honest with me. I did know that we had way too many cards. So I was kind of happy about the round one TKO because it, me it meant that we're going to get through the fights quicker. And that leads us to another TKO in the first round of boxing. This is one of the most hyped up matches of the night. Amon versus Trent. 
Now, this was uh, Lawrence, who uh, who was big in chess boxing, talked a lot of shit, going up against Grandmaster of Chess, Amon Hamilton. Now, they play a bit of chess. The chess is about as boring and average as you can get. No real advantage. Here. And now, then the I boxing the starts. Federation and head of rules and regulations for the World Chess Boxing Organization. Oh, we start early? Nice, clean jab. Landed for oh! Big right hand. Oh! Big left hand. This is not oh, what I expected. Coming up with a big flurry. Both landing shots. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, he's caught him. It's crazy that these are two of the best chess players in the world. Isn't that crazy? Still landing left and right is Amon. Lauren sneaking in jabs. Big shots landed for both fighters. So oh, another big oh, 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 my God. The first knockout of the match. Right on the chin of Amon. Oh, a good slip of counter right for Amon. Oh, he hurt him. Oh, the referee steps oh, in. Another giving him a second count. Oh, the fight's oh. over! It is all TKO. over! Amon TKO. Hamilton by TKO! Now, initially, Lawrence was very upset about this being stopped in a TKO being called. But he said it in his own words, so I won't use mine. After having time to cool off and see the fight back, the ref made the correct call. I was stumbling and was hurt. I will be back fighting again soon as I feel like I got caught early and wasn't able to show the work I've done over the past months. Which I think is the right call, too. There's like a lot of moments in that where he's stumbling, walking around. If you're stumbling, walking, then with a man with two fists and a mean combo like Amon in the ring with you is not a good combination. I, I think it was a great call by the ref. Uh, and I think uh, uh, safer, safer for everybody involved. Which wrapped up the, uh, the GM versus IM match in surprising fashion. I really did not think it would happen like that. And it led us to what I think is everybody's match of the night. Uh, Dina versus Andrea. Yeah. Bishop for another there, London system. There's... Now, the chess was a London system. It's a pretty boring, straightforward system. We have the uh, the bar on the right here. This shows who's in the lead. And after two minutes, the answer is fucking no one because it's a London system. It's boring. It's standard. It's Hard basic. Uh, and then starts the actual boxing. And, and Andrea go. goes out First swinging. Underway. Dina and Andrea. Andrea coming oh. out. With big jab. Throws a big overhand right. A whiff. And I think you see Dina doing a lot of the same things Lawrence was doing, which I think might just be like innate human behavior when you are being attacked is like, whoa, 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 put the hands out, back the face away. But it turns out that's not very effective when you're trying to stop someone with two uh, fists that know how to use them. Wait, it is an octagon, Levy. Wow. Another oh! Ten seconds left. Final seconds of the round coming up. Three, two, one. Oh. And Dina did really good not to get uh, uh, tagged with a standing count in round one, but you can see it. It hurt her. Look the at this. water from her coach. Helmet is coming off. They're about to go back to the chest. Andrea board. looks like Ready. unaffected. Andrea looks like she ran a half mile. Round, just looking at the body language. Dina looks like she finished a half marathon. <laughs> now, I will say, Andrea, when I spoke to her after only two weeks of training, and it was off the record, she was like, I'm worried I'm going to beat Dina's ass too hard. And I was like, mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, I'm pretty fucking fit. And I was like, mm? And so I kind of expected her to be leading like she was. But what I didn't expect is although Dina was getting her ass beat, she played fucking phenomenal in chess. She played like she wasn't in a boxing match at all. Because the chess came back and it's like nothing ever happened. Dina immediately extends her time advantage from 40 seconds Wait, to almost a minute. To drag uh, second There's boxing round the starts. Of the second boxing round. Dina always on her back foot. Andrea constantly keeping up the pressure. Getting oh! oh! Same hugs kind oh! of energy that Tyson back and forth. This yeah, a bit of a feeling. Oh! I think there's a standing oh! count in this oh! round, right? He says it. And yeah. there's a Wow, stand. this is our Big first shot of the match. Standing count. Four. And there's one. Now, I think they're both incredibly tired, and I'm pretty sure this round ends with not a single other standing count. They break, they clinch, and then Dina's once again exhausted. And then begins the third chess round. And like Levy said earlier, there was a huge advantage for um, uh, Dina here to make an attack and win. Now, the good news is that Andrea had two minutes and eight seconds on the clock, and the round was two minutes total. So she was stalling as long as possible right. she has to be able to get to the third to boxing round. She has to make her move. Oh, my gosh. Guys, there is a plan to go here through the round and already. here. And it's made. I'm not sure why can stop whoa, whoa. that. And that's what she's doing. That's what she... I think, I think Black might be winning. Down. Oh, it's, it's force mate. It's force mate. Black is completely winning. So Andrea really slows it down. Made on the next move unless White sacrifices all of her pieces. 
She has to do a force check with her bishop. Oh, that was smart. She took the pawn okay, so the knight. Sacrificed. Wait, wait, but Dina missed maiden There's one. There's a check. And that's Dina missing maiden one. Out. And then she goes for a check over here, of course, trying to stall time. Andrea knows there's a checkmate coming. And she's been stalling as much of the time as she possibly could. She's Only eight sure. seconds. Are we going to see another boxing round? Ladies yes, and we gentlemen. are. Yes, we are. Dina misses checkmate in one move. Andrea, there oh, 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 my God. God. Another boxing round. We're going to oh, see them go out of the again. And then we enter the most contentious, the most drama-filled boxing round of the night. Seconds clock final. It spares that over. Oh, oh. Yeah. Connect. Now, Andrea is very aware that the situation she's in is that there's a checkmate and two moves happening, and all she can do is knock out her opponent. Facing her around the ring. And Dina again, stayed away. Being smart, playing the fence. But boom! Left foot. Oh! The tempo. Our first count. We got a standing you know, Then she goes, I'm ready. That's her first standing count. One minute. 30 seconds. Andrea has to make something happen. She's throwing swings. <laughs> Dina, Dina running for the hills. Now, Dina running around. She's got to be more Oh, what a hit. Oh, no. There's a stun. No. 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 All right. Second stoppage. Puts the gloves up. One more stoppage, and it's GG. 20 seconds. 18. Oh! 17. Andrea has to deliver the killing blow. Good connect by Andrea. 10 seconds. Will she deliver the killing blow and win, or will she lose to checkmate? Separate. There's five seconds. Now, the ref initially stops right here because of the clinch, right? Because they're just, you know, so in each other's bodies and faces that they're not even boxing anymore. Or will she lose to checkmate? So the ref comes over and says, all right, back it off, back it off, back it off. There's five seconds left. And then looks over like, you know, he's about to just move on with the fight and say, hey, start again. Looks over at Dina. Dina, in the same moment that he looks over, puts her arms up on the ropes. And then sees her resting. Looks over Andrea to see if Andrea's resting. Sees Andrea's not resting. And then because she's not prepared to fight, the same way. takes too long, starts the count. Waited out time. Counts one. Immediately the moment he counts one, the bell rings. Oh, there's the bell. Dina waited out time. Wow. Survived the round. And we're going back to chess. Oh, my gosh. And I think the confusion that happened there is because the bell rang, the bell should not ring when a count is going. You can blame the ref as much as you would like to do that. You can also, in this spot, blame the person who rang the bell. But after we uh, talked, and we talked for, I swear to God, an hour with all the referees, including him and the other two refs, and then the chess boxing officials, and then also two chess boxing world champions, we came to the conclusion that that should have been the call. There should have been a win right there, and Andrea should have won. Wow. In the crowd, in the crowd you can hear agrees. Furious. However, that's not what happened in the moment. What happened in the moment is that the ref made the call. He was interrupted by the bell, went along with what the bell did. The bell person was like, I'm just doing my thing. The time's over. I rang the bell. And then everybody else who was involved with the production didn't um, think that, that this was overturned. Uh, and, and Dina won the chess instantly, right? They sat down as a formality. There's only one thing that can happen here. Checkmate. Andrea resigns. And she resigns. She has resigned the game with checkmate incoming. And it wasn't until the entire event was over that Jacob, the producer, came up to me and he was like, hey, by the way, Andrea thinks what happened was BS. And I was like, what? Because in my mind, I thought people were just mad because they thought Andrea was kicking ass, not because there was any reason within the rules that should make uh, her the winner. Uh, which is why we ended up tweeting the next day after talking uh, this, which was us awarding a belt to Andrea but not reversing the decision. And I stand by it. I still think it would be really bullshit to reverse a decision. I think if it's not made in the moment, you you cannot reverse it. Because it's like, it's we fucked up. And I don't think Dina's the one who needs to pay for us f***ing up. And Andrea and Dina, we both talked to them before, and they seem to handle it pretty well. So all in all, happy with how it turned Let's out. it for your winner by checkmate, Dina Bad Bishop Belenkaya. Which leads us to our final fight of the night, which was honestly, I think, uh, the best fight of the night. Maybe with the exception of Dina and Andrea, but Disguised Toast versus Point Crow. This shit was crazy. Uh, and this one, this one, I had no clue how it was going to go. Oh, and it's worth noting right before this fight starts, Point Crow, the day before the fight, was like very adamant. He's like, I need a cup. And we're all like, yeah, that's fine. You, you, you can wear a cup. He's like, I got to have a cup. And I'm like, okay, let's just make sure Toast also has a cup because every competitor, no matter what equipment they have, 
their opponent needs to have the same equipment. So if one has headgear, the other needs headgear. If one has a cup, the other needs a cup, etc. And we're always going to go with the most safe option. The final match. There's the bell. First round underway. Oh. And fireworks already. Exchanging jabs. Cross over the top. Cross to the body. Cross back up top. Oh. And Eric. Point throw all over way him. more shot. Oh. He just sh <laughs> And separation. Let's see if we got a... Now, I think a fair standing count by the ref. Initially, a lot of the fights had somebody come out the gate swinging, and it seems like people are not prepared for that. And so within 15 seconds, there's already a standing count. Good call. Stoppage. We do. The count Ooh. begins. And, uh... Love Toast gloves, by the way. Toast is trying to implement something his coach... And that was our first one there. Set That's for the right. Fight. That's one so you see Point Grow. And, uh, He's going for a couple jabs. He gets low, and you can see his right hand connect right there, right into the crotch of Toast. And you can see just the way that he buckles. That is exactly how you buckle when you get punched in the nuts. Trying to implement something his coach told him. The oh, a low blow. Oh. Land. Point Crow, a little below the belt on that. Uh, we got a nut shot? No. no standing counts during a nut shot. Low blows are illegal. There's nothing wrong with falling to the ground after getting hit in the nuts. That's that's what you're supposed to do. But he did have a cup on. He did have a cup on. Pull himself together and be ready. Ah, to go. Yeah, we just took oh. a replay. The, crowd. the double oh, nut man. shot. That, that might have been two Boom. low blows. The first in finance mark. The second did. crowd is upset at that. They're booing Point Crow. I fully believe it was an accident. I bet his coach told him before hopping into the ring, hey, he's not going to be protecting his body. You can get a lot of good body shots. Aim for, like, you know, the, the, the liver, the rib, whatever the fucking thing you're supposed to hit on the body is. And so he's probably trying to go here. Toast gets as much time as he needs. Toast waving and, it and, off and Toast And Toast is like, no, you're fine, bro. You're fine. I, I know it wasn't intentional. Point Crow finding his entry. In oh, Toast was good, bro. He was slipping. Off with toast back up again. Ooh. Oh, is that the bell? Yeah, Toast swinging his way out. Not the bell yet. The rest 30 seconds the left fight. in the round. A lot of time. We got to grab Oh, there we go. And, and I'm looking. And Point Crow has wow. played that move. Ladies and gentlemen, Very that's checkmate. So... Right now, Toast has one minute to, s to figure this out, really. Bishop. And he's blundered it. Ooh. Checkmate if Point Crow finds it. Wait. Wait a minute. Oh. And he's hit uh, the clock. Uh, it's now a legal move. It's not mate. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're getting another boxing yep. round, ladies and gentlemen. Who's excited? So intense. The chess ends with Point Crow so impressively up literally two moves away from checkmating that's all you have to do it's a very simple thing but before he does that and this is the beauty of chess boxing is he has to fight for 90 seconds so he might forget a few things along the way oh a great slip big right counter big right toast. big oh, right toast on the ooh, attack and now two more shots later for toast definitely the advantage so far to toast right, toast right. looking good point crow reaching right. for a hug the crowd's getting excited by this legendary coach oh, oh. Wow, damn, damn. Point let's see what they do. Final the second, see some action. 10 seconds, let's get loud for them. Two right hooks to the body, one right up top for Point Crow. Big shots in the clinch. Separation coming in, final seconds and going. Ladies and gentlemen, there's the bell back to chess. They look exhausted. Wow, 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 Give it up wow. for these two warriors. Now, give it up because it should be over. Now, their noise canceling headphones are on. Levy, tell them yeah, the it's, truth. It's mate. It's mate literally by accident in many ways. King is out and about with no defense. The queen is in the corner. It's a very bad situation for Toast. And instead of all that. A defensive move, a castle. So huge mistake. I mean, this is looking very tough for White. There's a lot of ways to lose your queen here, here. Like, there's a lot of ways you can get closer with the queen and it gets captured. And and that's one King, of them. And that's King the captured. worst one. That King is captured. the worst move on the King board. Captured. King can capture queen. It's a free king capture wait, queen. Wait, Ludwig, it is forced. Black has no legal what? move except Other taking the, the queen. queen. That I think it has to be like Mojo top 10 worst chess moves all time. Black has no legal what? move except Other taking the, 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 queen. the queen. And Toast sees it. All right. He oh. captured a queen blunder! Wow! And then the final boxer, dude, free. look at. Uh, make sure you sign up with Twitch if you want to see any of your other favorite creators who are already Parker creating looks content on Fansly. Monster! Get on your feet, everybody! On your feet, make some noise! Final round of boxing in this event. It's Toast. It's Point Crow. The double. Point Crow has to knock him out. Oh no! Oh! Defense. Oh! All offense. 
Big hooks landing for both fighters. There's only been one count. It was against Toast. Well, halfway through the third oh. round. ground. Oh. Really nice step in. Oh. Two oh, strikes. Oh, he hurt him. He's definitely hurt him. There's I blood. I see some blood. Face. There's yeah. blood after yeah. that shot. He busted him open. Ten There's seconds remaining. Oh. oh. Right hand lands for Toast. Up against the ropes. Another big shot lands for point throw. Five, Five seconds. seconds. Jesus Three, Christ. Two. One. Wow. They're so exhausted. Holy shit. What a battle between these two, man. And then the chess. Toast is really good at playing the advantage. And he does. Toast is just moments away from winning this bout. Maiden one on the board. There it is. Toast. That's our first checkmate of the night a fucking amazing main event great fucking fight and you know what here's <laughs> here's the awkward thing this entire day i had a secret event planned after every single fight and the secret event was meant to be me in a slap boxing chess match against xqc in the day of the fight i drive over to xqc's house and i'm like yada 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 and i go to pick him up and I walk in, and I look around, and I realize, oh shit, he's not answering the door. And I'm like, well, son of a bitch, I have to get back to the rehearsal. I, well, he'll just probably answer one of my calls. That's at 11 a.m. Uh, a few hours go by. The event starts at around like, yeah, I would say like, you know, 3.30 p.m. That's when we start getting to it. Still no answer. And I'm like, uh... And that's when I look over at Connor and I'm like, my man, we might have to slap each other. But Connor, I, I, honestly, I'm glad it worked out the way it did because it, I think it was as perfect as I could have hoped for it to have been. I know, wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second right now. Just give me one moment, please. This is Mogul Chess Boxing Championship. Yeah, so what? Who gives a shit about the name? I made it up yesterday. You don't think they... You don't think that Ludwig should probably fight tonight? What? Yeah! Could I see a show of hands on who would like to fight him? Are there any children in the crowd? Raise your hands! <laughs> no, you guys don't want to fight me. You don't want to fight me. I'm, I, I, I'm very strong. Hey! I'm very strong. I, I think I might have found somebody I mean, right over here. Who is that? Sea Dog! What? what? Are you in? You in? I think it's time to embarrass you in your own event. Wow, big fighting words from Sea Dog and from the stands. Uh, and then I'll let Charlie take it away. You have you. Oh! oh it, happened. it happened. Slap directly on the cheek. Second shot coming up, Ludwig. Winding up and oh, such a bad slap. Such a bad slap. I fucking miss putting next round. You're fucked. <laughs> this is round one here, and it was immediately clear to my keen eye that these two have not trained in the art of slapping, at least not by a professional. Their technique is lacking, but I think Connor had the most natural aptitude for the for the sport. Really, really, and zeroing in on. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Oh, oh, my. That was the most artistic slap of the night. With Ludwig, it doesn't seem like he actually throws slaps with any velocity. He just kind of like goes straight through all in one constant speed, and that speed is like not fast. Of course, neither one of them is trying to hurt each other, but Connor well, actually seems to have no. like some vicious sass you, behind his slaps. What do you mean it's not fa It's fast. It's speedy. It's speedy. It's like, damn, that probably did hurt. No, no, it was fast. Ludwig's, I could see Connor being like, huh, that wasn't too bad. Coming. Okay, okay. Right before this slap. We were talking to each other and I looked over at Connor because his last slap was bad. And I, and I didn't want this to come across as if it was fake. And so I, and I look up, I look up to Connor. I say, go as hard as you can. And he says, are you sure? All right. Striking fear. Oh, oh he braced for it. He fucked me up, dude. I pre flinched like a little bit, but boom, makes my hair look like you're spinning out a mop. Bang. You can even see Connor's face. He's immediately like, oh, that was too hard. So in that last I'm bruising. round to try and seal the deal. 
And then Ludwig also threw a pretty decent That's slap, a bruise. but unfortunately, I won't spoil who the winner was, but I'll tell you, it wasn't decided by slaps. It was decided on the chessboard in a fucking amazing finish. Like, that was an incredible finale. Three, Three two, two, one! Oh my gosh! And Ludwig oh! loses! Ludwig has lost it on time! Oh, God. oh my, do we have an instant replay of we that? We need a replay! Ludwig loses on the game by like half a second. Is it on Ludwig? No! Oh! No way. Wow. Speed Dog takes the first ever. Oh. You choked so hard. Okay, I fucked up right here because right here, like five seconds I had five seconds. On the clock. Four, three. three. I made a move. Two. two and one. then I popped off out of the chair. But I didn't think he would make his move so fast. So then I went back oh. down. And by the time I got down, oh. my I was too late to make my move. And this black rectangle popped up on the screen and I lost. Like, his clock is literally at zero, zero, oh, zero. Oh, oh, fuck. Honestly, I thought it was a fucking great finale. I ain't mad about it at all. And Ludwig oh. loses! Ludwig has lost it! On top. Honestly, guys, I was throwing. I could have easily beat Connor both in chess and in slaps. Like, if you don't know, I'm pretty strong. So, <laughs> like...